Here's a fun article, Kate. A high percentage of consumers really don't understand percentages. <laughs> a study finds that people are particularly confused when companies use percentages greater than 100 to convey information. It's interesting. Yeah. So basically what happens is people see, oh, 105% more expensive. And then they do the math and they make it just 5% more expensive. I just picture a bunch of people sitting around the conference table. And when they start talking about percentages, like somebody around the table just like nods and smiles like they know what's going on. Right, right. Like, oh, uh uh-huh. So this study says more than half of the participants calculations in the 102% group were off by about 100%. They calculated 1.02 times the original amount instead of correctly calculating 2.02 times the original amount. By contrast, in the 98% group, most participants, 70%, were able to either get the right answer or pretty close to it. And not one participant was off by 100%. This is good knowledge to take forth and use today, Kate. Man, it's a lot of knowledge right there that you're throwing out there. Yeah, you're better off saying, oh, that's more than two times as much. As opposed to, oh yeah, that's 102% more than that. And it does kind of hurt my brain just talking about this. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, how are you handling things? Definitely hurting the brain a little bit. Okay. This is one of those nod and smile moments. Ha! <laughs> the pattern continued throughout the study. And in, an- in another experiment, the authors found that mistaking relative change for relative size affected purchasing decisions. Participants thought that it was more likely that someone would upgrade their phone if the new battery had 92% more battery time than if the phone had 108% more battery time. So this is really more than anything all about probably advertising goods and services, I would think. Correct. I would think so. When you're trying to promote products to people. Okay, 102% more effective. Actually makes it sound worse than if it was 98% more effective. Hmm. Oh, these consumers. They're a hard nut to crack. (laughs) Says some executive at some consumer goods company yeah right there it is did you see adina menzel that's how you say her name right mm-hmm. see john travolta ruined it for me and everybody she wants to make a golden girls musical oh that could be fun thank you paul b they've already got one song written i mean if they use Easy that busy that's the uh, opening yeah did she say who she wants to have in the Golden Girls musical? Doesn't say this, so it, it's Kelly Clarkson that came up when she was talking to Kelly Clarkson. Kelly Clarkson would be a good Golden Girl. Kristen Chenoweth, Adina Menzel. We need a, a fourth. Oh, you're casting mm-hmm. them all. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Who's which character? Uh, I think Chris uh, Kelly Clarkson will be Rose. No, Kelly Clarkson will be Blanche. Kelly Clarkson's going to be Blanche. Kristen Chenoweth, Rose. And Adina Menzel will be Dorothy. So we need a, we need a Sophia. Hmm. Dolly Parton. There you go. Everyone seems to like her. Did I tell you I bought Dolly Parton's book? No. How is it? Okay. So Dolly Parton wrote a book with James Patterson, who is a well-known author. So if, Anybody's like, oh, Dolly Parton wrote a book. I'm just thinking she teamed up with James Patterson. This is not going to be a a polished turd. It's got to be good because James Patterson's a part of it, right? Okay. It's called Run, Rose, Run. And I bought the Audible book and it has a narrator. But then all the voices are done by people. And Dolly Parton is one of the voices. And it's so distracting Oh. That I couldn't get through like 45 minutes of it. Brutal. I know. I was expecting a glowing review. Well, I, I told my sister, I was like, I need to give it a break before I, I tried to attempt it again. I need to be paying attention to it more instead of like listening to it when I'm driving because I get very like, wait, who was that talking? Because it, it sounded just like the other person talking. The voices are very similar. Right. So they've got actors portraying... Voices of characters in the book. You've got a narrator talking as well. Mm -hmm. And then Dolly Parton. She is one of the... um, As herself. Yes. Well, not as herself. She's a character. But I only recognized... Wait, wait. It's still... Oh, it's not like an autobiography or anything. 
No, it's a, it's fiction. Oh, I see. I run, Rose, run. Gotcha. Yeah. Now I follow. Cause as typically, if someone helps you ghostwrite your autobiography, they're not there front and center next to your name. I don't think. Right. Or it might say with such and such. Right. Okay. So thumbs down. <laughs> yeah, and there's it's not uh, names that I know. There's one name on there besides Dolly Parton that I know who is playing Rose. And it's Kelsey Ballerini, who is a country singer, and I really like her. But the dudes all sound very similar. So when the dudes are talking, I can't tell which feller is talking. Was that Evan? Was that Eddie? <laughs> I don't know. There's got to be an Evan and an Eddie. It seems ripe for confusion in its own. Right. Right, right. yeah. So you done? You giving it up? Well... I think I need to give it a break. Do they have a return policy, Audible? I That I don't know. Should probably look into that. Maybe. Do you think if you were to read the book itself, non-audiobook form, you might like it? I think so. Okay. Good reviews? As, yeah, it's got great reviews. Okay. It's just the audiobook is distracting with all the different actors. Yeah. Many of which you can't tell apart. Yes. So there you go. A Kate book review. Audiobook review. Audiobook. Yep. Other than it taking a lot longer to get through a book in audiobook form, I can't say I've had too I mean, yeah, the person speaking many times can be distracting. Why do they put this British person with no with no grasp on diction? Why did they put them in charge? Now I have been reading an Australian author recently, and the narrator is Australian. And uh, some of the words sound funny. Like she was trying to say she rifled through her purse and she said riffled. Ah, and instead okay. of saying asphalt, it was like asphalt. Really? Yeah. I was like, that's not right. It seems like they're just being bad at pronouncing things correctly. In that case, that sounds beyond an accent. I mean, maybe that's their Australian. Maybe that's how they say that. I think so. I don't know. I'm reading wow. an Irish... Uh, a book by an Irish author with an Irish narrator. And I haven't noticed that as much. I'm just like, hmm. So both of these are, are they narrated by people who aren't the author? Correct. But they felt the need like, oh, we need to at least have someone represent the author's accent appropriately. Or maybe that's how the author wanted it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't mean to exclude, exclude them from that decision making process. Yeah. But maybe because in this book that I'm reading with the Irish accent, that's how it's written. I've read some of her books, like read the books, and now I'm listening to one of her books, and that's how it's written when they've got the accent written that way. Like when they say, um, oh. Color's got a U in it. It's got a, it's got a cuss word in it, so I can't say, like, uh, like the way they say their T's and their R's sometimes. Instead of saying 3.30, it'll be like 3.30. Oh, yeah. 3.30. 3.30. Yeah, it's written that way in the dialogue. So then the narrator will actually say that the way it's supposed to be said. I don't know. Okay. But it always catches me when I'm like, what'd she do? She riffled through something? Oh, no. She rifled. Got it. It's just, maybe it's Australian. That's a recipe to get potentially derailed. I'd be like, oh, I need to do some research now on whether this is common that these people pronounce rifled incorrectly. Hmm. It just catches me off guard. I don't do any research after that. It's a nice talent you have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Letting it go. Yeah. I'll get there one day. <laughs> Are you reading anything right now? No. I've been, I'm still off Twitter. Yeah, that's going good? That's going well, which I still browse through my news headlines, as we discussed previously, using my RSS, uh, my RSS reader, my app that I use for mm -hmm. that stuff. But it's not social media influence, so that's nice. And I thought I would end up going through some of my backlog, because I've got books to read. Uh, physical yeah. books to read, that is. Yeah, there's this one called Ask Iwata, which I think I had actually mentioned before, that that is a book I have yet to finish. It's with the now deceased, the former head of Nintendo. And uh, 
that's it. I think I've just been neglecting that one mostly. I'm sure there's others around the house that have also been needlessly neglected. There might be some valuable inf- information in there. Gotcha. You have other books that you would like to write? You're, you're a pretty big book reader. I did just put some books on my wish list. I want to read All the Old Knives. Have you heard of that Amazon movie with Chris Pine? No. Can I guess what the plot is? You can. Someone goes to a garage sale and buys some used knives and turns out you can barely butter bread with them. Is that it? So close. Damn. Nine years ago, terrorists hijacked a plane in Vienna. Oh. Somehow a rescue attempt staged from the inside went terribly wrong and everyone on board was killed. Members of the CIA station in Vienna during that time were witnesses to this terrible tragedy, gathering intel from their sources during those tense hours. Hmm. Yeah. But it's a show, it's a movie on Amazon Prime right now. And I want to read the book before I watch it. Looks good. You try to make a special point to do that? I do. If you feel like a movie looks compelling and you're aware that there doesn't need to be a critically acclaimed book? No. But you might get the book first. Is it difficult for you to do it the other direction? Movie first, then book? Yes. If you've seen the movie, are you, are you pretty unlikely to read the book? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Thrilling. I don't know. Okay. (laughs) I like to read the book first. And I know that the book is not the same as a movie. I know that. And I feel like sometimes they can bring good things either way. But I I like to read the book before I watch the movie. Or sometimes I'll see a trailer for a movie. I'm like, well, I'm going to read that book. And then I'll watch that movie. (laughs) That's good. That's good discipline. Many times for me, I'm just like, oh, man, the movie is... So much less of a time investment. What am I going to do? It's right there. Yeah. <laughs> Kate, did you look at Time's most influential people? Did you go check out the list of people you're supposed to be influenced by? I feel like I've seen people who've made that list. Right. They just kind of like Pete Davidson, for example, is one of them. I don't think I knew that he was on that list. No yeah. kidding. Yep. He's in the artists section. Okay. As are people like Sarah Jessica Parker, Mila Kunis, Andrew Garfield, Channing Tatum, Jeremy Strong, Zoe Kravitz in there. And then there's some other names in there that I don't recognize who could potentially be blockbuster names, and I'm just that ignorant about it. I don't know. Well, I think Miranda Lambert is on that list. Yeah. The artist list. I did see her name. Megan Thee Stallion on there, too. I saw Miranda Lambert, but I don't see her under this section now that I'm looking at it. Miranda, where'd you go? Where'd you go, Miranda? Where'd you go? Can't hide from me. Oh, she shows up under Innovators. Oh, there she interesting. Is. As does Zendaya. Who's in there? Mm-hmm. And then a whole bunch of people I have not heard of. Interesting. And then Titans. Okay. Has a bunch of names I haven't heard of, but also... Tim Cook, you know, CEO of Apple. Oprah is in there. Chris Jenner. Then you have leaders, and there's a whole bunch of horrible people listed in here. Vladimir Putin, <laughs> one of them. Yeah. I mean, Joe Rogan made the list, so. Right, Joe Rogan's under the leaders list. Leaders. And he's got some, he's got some followers. He does. Mm-hmm. Icons, Mary J. Blige. Raphael Nadal. You know him? What about John Batiste? What list is he on? He's on the, the website just broke on me. It's no longer scrolling. I, I clicked on it and it says I have to subscribe to read the whole thing. So not going to do that. No. <laughs> okay. I'm back under here again. Who, who did you have me looking up? Oh, John Batiste. Batiste, right. Quincy Jones wrote his, by the way. Under icons. Yeah. They're with Mary J. Blige. Nice. What'd you say about Quincy Jones? Quincy Jones wrote the one on John Batiste. Oh, okay. That's one thing that's cool about the 100 influential people list is what one famous person says about the person they're writing about. Gotcha. Raphael Nadal was written by Tom Brady. Really? You know Raphael, the tennis guy? Yeah. 
Adele, also under the icons list, hers is written by James Corden. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And scrolling through some more, I'm now under the Pioneers. And I don't recognize any of their names, so thus they really can't possibly be that influential, right? (laughs) Or no, does Matt just have a gaping chasm in his head where Pioneers should reside? Your guy Jeremy Strong is on the... uh... Artist list. Yeah, time, 100 influential people. Isn't he in that show that you watch? Yeah, Succession. Yeah. It's a good one. And then Zendaya is in Euphoria, another show that I've seen all the episodes for. No, Bill Hader. If Bill Hader would have been on here, I'd have had a trifecta. Oh. Those are probably my three shows. Barry is quite good. So there you go, dear listener. There's Time Magazine's 100 influential people. Minus a whole bunch that I didn't mention. (laughs) <laughs> and yes i know we're like a week late to talking about this but you know it's a long list it is uh, a lot of names to memorize yeah a long list did you see that the rock's daughter is now going to be a professional wrestler oh i was hoping she was going to be a cook or something that way we could smell la 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 what she's cooking and it would be a different take on the catchphrase. Right. No, I did not. She's going to be a professional wrestler. She signed with WWE and her, her uh, wrestling name will be Ava Rain. Oh, I thought maybe it was going to be Dwayneette the Rocket. Oh. Johnson, but no. I don't so much love Dwayneette, but the Rocket, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Dwayneette. You don't think that's a pretty name? No. Dwayneette. <laughs> Dwayneette sounds like a name for a very handsome woman. Right. I don't know. All right. So in all seriousness, The Rock's daughter is going by what name in professional wrestling? Ava Rain. Ava Rain. How old is she? Do you know by chance? Mm, I'm going to say she's 21. What's her actual name? Do you know? Simone. Simone. The Rock Johnson. She is 20. She 20. I was close. Okay. She's 20. And she looks a lot like her dad. Is she in WWE or is she in some starter? Sign uh, WWE. Signed a deal with WWE. How did you? How am I going to find her? Ava E V A Rain, R A I N. I just looked up Simone Johnson. Oh, okay. But if you wanted to look up Ava Rain, it's A V A R A I N E. R E A R E U. What? R A I N E. Okay. I mean, it might be R E I G N. Simone Johnson, also known as Sammy J, is an American actress from Los Angeles. Blah, 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 blah. She's an actor, too. Or was once upon a time. Well, she's going into professionally wrestling, so I think she's still an actress, right? <laughs> oh! Yep, I did it. Went there. Went there. How many Simone Johnsons are there? It's just the one. I mean, it popped right up for me. Yeah. See, I'm still using Bing. No sympathy. None. (laughs) You chose it. It's your fault. You chose this fate. (laughs) Uh, Uh, Yes. Yes, I did. And it's going great. Tell you what. Now I'm looking at pictures of Simone's mother and how jacked she is. Oh, really? And looking at her next to her ex husband, and wow. Is Dwayne the Rock Johnson currently single? No, he's married. But to a different with to a different lady. Different lady. How many divorces has the Rock had? Just the one. Phew. It's a close one. It happens. I still think Dwayne would be a fantastic name. I just keep looking at his ex-wife and she is jacked. How did you find that photo? When I looked up Simone Johnson and it said who her parents are, I clicked on it and then now I'm looking at images. Danny, D-A-N-Y, Garcia. Okay. Danny Garcia. Should I put the rock next to her name? Maybe. 
I didn't have to. Boom. <laughs> that, oh, yeah, because you got a good search engine. Google. I heard a DM. There's lots of Danny Garcia's, turns out. Do you have one N? Chef Danny Garcia is one N. And seems to be a man. Danny Garcia highlights Danny Garcia. Oh, this one is actually D-A-N-N-Y, who is a boxing. He's a boxer. He is a boxing person. Okay, well, thanks, Kate. Dwayne The Rock Johnson's daughter, Ava Rain, is a wrestler for WWE now, or is at least signed with them. Yes, signed with them. That'll be interesting. If you smell la 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 la. Because did he start with WWE? Yes, I believe so. I mean, he may have been in a minor league of sort, but that's where he spent. That's where he busted on the scene was WWE? Yeah, yeah, and he's never been over on, like, WCW back in the day when that was a thing. Yeah. Or ECW. I think he's always been with WWE. I saw recently that Stephanie McMahon's taking a leave. I know you're very curious about their, the inner workings of WWE. Well, that would be the daughter of Vince, right? Correct, yeah. Is she a wrestler or is she taking a leave from like the office? I think she's taking a leave from the office. She has been in the ring before, has wrestled. I couldn't tell you if that was for an extended period of time or not. She's married to Triple H. You know Triple H? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're married. He used to be with China. Did you know that? R.I.P. No, I don't think I knew that. Correct. China is dead. You've won this edition of Celebrity Dead or Alive, Kate. I'm good at it. Good at it. The wrestler Dead or Alive one would be really hard. Just doing that. that. I agree. And I feel like in the last, I don't know, three years, there's been a lot of wrestlers die. Yeah, Scott Hall died not that long ago. Razor Ramon. Also known as Razor Ramon, yep. Was it the same guy? Yeah, same guy. Okay. Oh, so maybe See, not that many I'm people out. have died. It's just their various different stage names. Maybe that's it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Jake the Snake is alive. Yep. China is not. China, not so much. No. God love her. Yep. But meanwhile, get excited for Dwayne The Rock Johnson's daughter to become a wrestler and hopefully live a long, productive life. Right, Kate? Fingers crossed. Okay. God willing and the creek don't rise. God willing and the creek don't rise. That's right. You know, we've got that song, Fingers Crossed, by Lauren Spencer Smith. Mm-hmm. It got me thinking about what happens if you pinky swear someone and then behind your back, cross fingers. Have you thought about that? You ever spend much time pondering that question? I haven't, because I feel like a pinky swear is legal and binding. Okay, so it overrules any potential fingers mm-hmm. crossing? It should. Yeah, no doubt. Legally, at least. Right. In the court of law. That's got to be in the court of law. But she pinky swore. But she pinky swore. 